<laughs> oh my goodness oh my goodness thank you so much guys because you know i usually check my sound like when i start i check it later and so i saw 10 comments i'm like 10 comments let me go and check and i'm like okay no sound oh my gosh guys please forgive me oh thankfully i haven't gone too far so you guys couldn't hear me that's quite unfortunate okay let me start all over again guys yeah welcome to this live video today i'm actually recording this live video from our conference room so you'll see a change in scenery i hope you guys can hear me now drop me an emoji if you can hear me drop me an emoji <laughs> yes i'm starting all over again for you guys drop me an emoji Thank you. You guys are wonderful and fabulous. Thank you for drawing my attention. Drop me an emoji if you can hear me, please. Drop me an emoji. Thank you. So welcome to this live video. Like my page, follow, subscribe, AK Pokul or YouTube on Facebook. And thank you so much for joining. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I see the emojis trooping in and coming in. So you guys can hear me loud and clear. This is just funny. It's been a very stressful morning at the office, you know, resolving issues, just trying to, you know, the life of um, um, a business, you know, it's, it's, it's very, it's very, very tough. So we are always on the grind. Oh gosh, that's really funny. So yes, as I said, awesome, awesome. I can see you guys can hear me now. I'm so excited. Oh, that was so funny. So guys, President Joe Biden was elected in January, 2020. Remember we had ex-President Trump who was here and he was, people said he was anti-immigrant. So Joe Biden came in with some new vim. He wanted to legalize about 11 million undocumented immigrants. So, so far there have been so many efforts, but they have all fallen through plan A. Well, we came with the citizenship bill that didn't happen. We didn't hear much about it again. And then recently we started with the budget reconciliation process janet is laughing oh my gosh yes that was so funny i mean i can't believe i would have done a whole live video on mute i would have been so mad at myself so well uh, thank you guys for drawing my attention to it so yes um we started with the budget reconciliation process what the democrats wanted to do was that they wanted to include legalization of the 11 million undocumented people through the budget reconciliation process. So what that meant was that they were going to, so to pass any type of law in Senate, you need to have, you know, usually have a 60 vote majority. And um, that is, that means that you should be able to override the filibuster. And Democrats don't have 60 people. They have just 50 people out of the 100 member Senate. So it's it's, it's split 50-50, but Kamala Harris, which is who is on the side of the Democrats, makes it 51 for Democrats and then 49, I mean, well, well, still 50 for the, for the um, Republicans. In any case, Kamala Harris is the tiebreaker. Yeah, um, she is a tiebreaker. So they don't have 60 votes. So how do they now pass a bill that will favor immigrants, you know, that will favor undocumented immigrants? So they came with a plan. Okay, they were going to do a budget reconciliation. They were going to add, um, they were going to circumvent the voting process by actually um, trying to legalize undocumented immigrants through a budget bill, through the budget. Because when it's a budget reconciliation, you just need majority, vote by majority. Unfortunately, the parliamentarian said, nope, you cannot include this in the um, budget bill because trying to legalize 11 million people is not a budgetary decision, it's a policy. It's a huge policy undertaking that cannot be included in a budget reconciliation. So downhill went plan A, plan A, poof, just in our faces, it did not happen. They came with a plan B, this was also a few weeks ago, and they came with a registry strategy. Guys, the registry strategy simply means that well, currently it's in the laws that anybody that was here in the United States from 1st January 1972, before 1st January 1972, can't actually get a green card through the registry process. So what they wanted to do was simply tweak the date and make, you know, change the date from 1972 to 2011 to, to, so that anybody that has been here in the United States before 2011 can actually get a green card. Again, um, that was also through the budget reconciliation process. Um, the, the parliamentarian said no way she, you know, they weren't going to allow that. Um, it flouted some of the Senate rules. So guys, we have a plan C now in place. I don't know how viable this plan C is, but that's what we're going to be discussing today. Oh, okay. <laughs> guys, I'll read comments soon. I think that um, let's read some comments before we talk about the plan C. 
<laughs> hot rap oh my gosh he says volume he was a pioneer of you know the no volume association thank you so much hot rap i'm so excited that you are here frederick video says your sound please thank you also frederick oh as always your support is very appreciated william Iwuku says no sound oh part of the no sound association then janet davis my beautiful woman she says lawyer no sound janet so happy to be seeing you on here today also he says, Frederick says, please check your sound. <laughs> and then Hot Rep again tells me, no sound. Oh my gosh, this warning, I still couldn't hear. And then Hot Rep says, we can't hear. Hot Rep, you did amazing. Thank you. Frederick says, sound. Hot Rep says, restart the live at your service, Hot Rep. I did restart it. So, <laughs> but everyone who says she hasn't noticed it yet. No, I was just talking, talking, talking like, you know, an old lady rambling on and on. Janet says, you will have to start from the beginning. Yes, unfortunately, I did. I had just done three minutes, so that was good. Hot Rep says, yes. Frederick says, restart all again. Hot Rep says, yes. Okay, yeah, I think he was responding. Can you hear? And then he drops the emoji. And then Hot Rep says, he's running in from Chicago. Happy to be here. Happy that you're here with us. Frederick confirms that people can hear now. Janet is laughing. Frank is giving us the... <laughs> Well, cross finger victory sign. Good job. Okay, yeah, you can hear us now. Okay. Hot Rep says, I came here in 2017. Okay. Okay, okay. And Nanapia says, my ear is itching me. Oh, gosh, good. Well, Nanapia, you need to get a, a cotton buds. What do they call them? And then, well, I'm going to satisfy that itching ear right now. We're going to be spilling all the legal tea. So, guys, I'm happy you're here. Happy that everybody can hear me now. So, yeah, let's continue. So, I'm going to be sharing my screen. Continue to drop me your comments if you have them. And then let's talk about the new um, plan C. It's it's really, it's an interesting plan, but I kind of feel like the, 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 the plan the strength of the plan keeps declining because the plan A was solid. Plan B, you know, a little bit less solid. And now plan C, I don't know. So I'm I'm beginning to think that these Democrats may, I don't know, but it's just it's just it's just become really tough. So I hope that um okay. So guys, right here, let me pull this up. Let me actually, I realize that if I don't zoom in, you guys cannot really see. So this is from the New York Times. We're going to be reviewing this and then we will um, look at what it means, what the plan means actually, so that we can understand we're breaking it down. So significantly, the proposal would not put, um, okay, so yes, this new plan, it's, you know, sort of like a half-baked plan. It's not the full package. You know, like, um, you are not getting the full meal. It's sort of like, well, a little bit of dessert. But when you're hungry, you can take anything, right? Even if it's just a cookie, you'll take it. You were expecting, you know, a full meal, like lots of fried rice, jollof, chicken, salad, kele willy, ice cream, juice. But it didn't come. And just you know, maybe Kele Wele came, you'll take it like that. So this new plan is not the most ideal because it will not, the new proposal, it will not give millions of undocumented people, it will not put them on the direct path to citizenship, okay? And it will not entitle them to green cards immediately, but it's better than nothing. It's going to give them a way to, you know, work and then a way to travel and, you know, just a way to do certain things that they are not able to do very freely. Okay, so um, let me now scroll down to the main gist of the plan. Did I actually, let me see. Okay. Uh, oh gosh, I think I had scrolled down way too fast. Uh, let me see if this is here. Okay, it should be up here. Uh, okay, I think this is it. Okay, that's it. I found it right there. Okay, so President Biden's effort to finally make progress has been stalled by Republicans, has been blocked by courts and rejected for violating the Senate rules as we talked about. So now Democrat leaders are seriously considering a long shot proposal intended to get around the political and procedural roadblocks by including language in the president's 
sweeping social safety net package. And this plan is to provide a temporary legal status to millions of undocumented immigrants, according to, um, you know, Congress officials. OK, so now let's see what the plan is right here. I'm sorry, my email keeps blowing up. OK, so. So the proposal, which drops one of the president's key demands to create a direct path to citizenship, faces a string of challenges. Okay, um, they're trying to register. So basically, the plan is known as parole. Okay, that's the plan. It's parole. I don't know why I cannot find it here because that's what I just wanted to talk about. Okay, this solution. Um, okay, so no, let me pull that here. Did I pull the wrong document? No, I think this is it. Oh, perfect. Yes, I found it. Bingo. Awesome. Okay, good news. Okay, so under this plan, the immigration measures would, in, would be included in the, yes, as we said, and uh, would be included in the social safety net bill that Democrats intend to pass unilaterally through a fast track process known as budget reconciliation. Okay. And it will allow set, um, setting spending and tax bills to pass by a simple majority, 51 out of 100. And those measures would expand the Homeland Security's authority. Here is it. Here it is. To grant a temporary status known as parole to those who are undocumented and have lived in the U.S. for a decade or more, shielding them from deportation. So the plan C is very simple. They want to grant temporary protected status known as a parole when you're granted parole it's just a temporary measure it doesn't give you a green card but it, it gives you um it, sh it shields you from deportation first of all and it, it it may allow you to do certain things okay that being undocumented will not allow you to do so it's a step up from undocumented but it's still below green card and um citizenship okay so what they are praying is that this senate parliamentarian will not come again and say that oh um th she will not allow it because again she's in charge of senate making sure um the senators follow the rules so the plan has to pass master with elizabeth mcdonald she's a senate parliamentarian of course she has shut down previous attempts to include the path to citizenship um okay so guys let me let me see if there's um there's a portion I wanted to discuss with you and then we'll talk about what parole means what parole specifically means yes I really like that Democrats they they, they remain committed to finding a way to pursue a path to citizenship um, but believe the latest option would be a chance to more quickly help immigrants in the light of the parliamentarian's rulings okay um okay the proposal mm -hmm. yeah we talked about this we spoke about this. <clears throat> Good. So this is what the, the 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 parole will offer. Let's talk about that. So supporters of the plan have argued that the watered down proposal should satisfy the parliamentarian who had criticized the size of earlier versions. Um, yes. Yeah, so they are saying that this is a watered down version. I mean, just trying to give them parole. It's not so ambitious. Like we're not trying to give undocumented people. We're not trying to reward them with U.S. citizenship. It's just parole. So hopefully they're going to agree with this. The legislation would offer undocumented immigrants not just protection from deportation, but also the ability to obtain a work permit, a point that immigration advocates say should more clearly connect the provision to the federal budget. So essentially what they're saying is that if we're going to be giving undocumented people parole and then this parole will give them work permit, then it connects it to the federal budget and it makes it um, easier for the parliamentarian, the Senate parliamentarian to say that, OK, then this is a budgetary issue that should be included in the budget reconciliation. Guys, you see the connection. So that's how they are going to connect this plan C to the budget reconciliation process and try to legalize undocumented immigrants. It's 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 amazing. This is really the last ditch effort to try and salvage something uh, that uh, something for the reconciliation process that can provide some level of protection to the undocumented. OK, I mean, I really hope this works out. So, guys, let's talk about a just a little bit about what a parole is and what we can expect from it. 
pod um rep says does the plan c fit me in it looks like um i mean they have to come up with a date you know when they want to give the parole like who are they going to give the parole to people who came here in 2010 people who came here in um 2021 um some of the plans so far some of them say okay if you've been here since january 2021 it might fit you in some of them say since january 2011 so it depends once we have the final text of um what the proposal is we can tell olamde adibayo says well done beautiful attorney thank you so much olamde for your very kind words okay so um yeah this is a large ditch effort let me take this off and then let's talk about parole what exactly is parole and um what can we anticipate okay yeah that's fine let me share the parole screen from the foreign affairs manual foreign affairs manual um guys drop me your comment i will be you know reading them okay let me let me zoom in we'll just find out you know what really uh, i can't really scroll um zoom in here so let's just leave the font size hopefully you guys can see a little bit okay so parole does not confer immigration benefits okay so we're going to be talking very briefly about what uh, what what parole does parole does not in and of itself confer any immigration benefit it uh, parole is authorized for a specific and temporary period and parolees must depart the U.S. at the end of their parole authorization period, or they must adjust to immigrant status, usually based on a previous approved petition. Um, okay, so that's that's that. Uh, it just depends on what the plan is. I don't know what, what the full plan will be, if they are going to give them some way to adjust after the parole period. Um, that would be interesting. Let me see if I can find the law on what a parole is okay perfect i think we should do um the types of parole no i don't we don't want this we want um let me see if there's a there's a definition here Oh, good. Yes, because we should have first defined what parole is because many people may not know what it is. Okay, so right here, what is parole? So parole authority is governed by Section 212D of the INA, the Immigration and Nationality Act. Okay, what is it in simple terms? A parole is, um, it allows, it's permission given to an otherwise ineligible non-citizen to enter the U.S. for a short period due to, number one, either an urgent humanitarian reason or two, for significant public benefits. So I suspect they are coming under the umbrella of the significant public benefits. So we've been filing Afghanistan pro documents, but that is for urgent humanitarian reasons based on the issues happening in Afghanistan. But under this, it's for significant public benefits. What's the public benefits? You know, people are undocumented. They are here, no work. It's a threat to the security. So um, giving them parole will allow the U.S. to be able to see that, oh, these people are here, this is this is where they live, these are their names, they have permission to be here. Okay, so that's really what a parole is, just giving permission for a temporary period to um, people who are otherwise ineligible to be in the U.S. to stay here um, in the U.S. Okay, so, um, yeah, we won't talk about that um okay i think that's it i think that um that's fine so this is just really briefly on what a parole is just to give you guys an idea on what it is it's just really a permission to be here in the u.s and then they are planning to give work permits and then perhaps you could travel we'll see we'll wait um within the next few days to see if the plan concretizes or it also falls through like the others have Okay, guys, so um, just coming your way. Actually, I just realized that when I was on mute, I was saying happy Friday, but today is Thursday. Well, you guys didn't hear that anyway. So happy Thursday. Today is Thursday. We have one more day. So hopefully tomorrow I'll see you guys on the live video. Let me read a few comments. Um, Frederick says, everyone here needs amnesty. And then Hot Rep says, yes, bro. Hmm. 
Nana Pia says, can someone be under, par under parole but married to a US citizen but married to a citizen adjust his status. Absolutely. If you are under, if you have parole and you're married to a US citizen, you should be able to adjust your status through that. So certainly um, the parole is sort of just like a transitioning status. So from parole, you should be able to try to adjust your status through other qualifying means, which could be marriage to a US citizen or otherwise, okay? Again, married to U.S. citizen is always um, the simplest, easiest. Of course, if it's a genuine marriage, because um, with that one, it doesn't matter how long you've been undocumented. If once, so far as you were inspected and admitted to the United States when you were coming from the airport and you didn't, you were not EWI entry without inspection. You should be able to adjust um, very simply through married to a U.S. citizen, and it doesn't matter if you've been undocumented for twenty years. Um, it's still very possible. So. Um, of course, again, genuine marriage, because normally um, doing it through a fake marriage, not advisable, too stressful, illegal, not worth it. <laughs> I'm sorry for that sneeze. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for joining. I hope you guys have had fun. Um, Hot Rep says, I was married. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. I was married, but she wants to divorce, but we have a son. The most painful part is that we have not even started the process. Um, and we've been married for two years. Hot rep, you may be eligible for something called VAWA. You may be, please make sure you call an attorney. And then um, you separated last year. Okay, so far as when you divorce, you have just two years within which you file VAWA. But yeah, uh, make sure you call an immigration attorney to see if you, if you qualify for VAWA because that might be um, a helpful process to you and then you can get started on that <coughs> i'm so sorry okay guys so very happy to have been on here to join you today i hope i'll see you guys tomorrow on this live video um please be safe take care and be good <laughs> okay bye-bye